We're back here now with Kevin Jackson. We're very excited to have you on our IFCO TV Live from New Beginnings. I'm very program. excited to be here. Isn't very excited. Awesome? Yes, I'm very yes. excited. So, for those of you, if there's anybody out there in this planet who doesn't know Kevin Jackson, um, 98, 89 grad. Uh, yes. Right? yes, yes, correct. From life, graduate of from Life University. Life. And you practice yes. in York, Pennsylvania? York, PA, yeah. Very good. Yeah. With your wife? With my wife, That's yes. That's awesome. Yes. Cool. Yes. And um, I want to start off with one of my favorite topics about you. Okay. You know where I'm going with that? No. No? No. <laughs> so there is a wonderful organization in Pennsylvania ah. called the Chiropractic Fellowship of Pennsylvania. Yes. Right? Yes. Same values and yes. principles yes. as the IFCO. A very important organization exactly. as the uh, IFCO, yes. Yes, it is, it is actually the organization in Pennsylvania. Yes. And you have reached a top level in that organization, not the very top level. But it is but almost the top. Almost. Yes. Kevin is our new vice president of yes. the Chiropractic Fellowship of Pennsylvania, and we're very excited about hey, that. Congratulations. Let me ask you about the fellowship. Tell us okay. a little bit about the fellowship. What do they do? What do they stand for? In a nutshell, the fellowship is the principled organization of Pennsylvania. Its sole job is to move chiropractic forward in Pennsylvania. It's to protect our basic fundamental tenets, the philosophy, the subluxation term, the, the uh, subluxation, the adjustment, keeping medicine out of our sacred profession. That's what we want to do. We want to grow this profession big and proud. We want to reclaim chiropractic stronger than ever in Pennsylvania. That's great. Awesome. And we're going to do it. Yes. And we're doing it. And we're having new people sign up all the time and um, we're supporting each other. It's a very positive organization. Um, we're willing to put up with each other's little idiosyncrasies just to move the principle forward. Very important. And how do people get in touch with the fellowship? How can they join? Well, we have a website, and that's very important that the, you give the website address. I like how you <laughs> said that. In. Um, it's www.chirofellow, P-A, Dot org or dot com. Unfortunately, I'm not quite sure. I'm pretty it sure it's dot org, org right? Yes. Yep. Um, so obviously, you can find us there. You can find us on Facebook. We have a page and we have a group on Facebook. So both of those are also ways to get in touch with us. Well, you're our social media um, contact person, yes. so that's why I let you take over the, the helm I, I, there. I'm a little important too. We're like a team here. And <laughs> she, she made me be the vice president, and uh, yeah, I, how did that happen? Um, well, the how president. How did you become? Vice president. That's a good question. The president said, we need a vice president. Mm -hmm. And then Bryn said, Kevin will be the vice president. Would anybody agree with that? And everybody agreed, and I had no <laughs> chance of disagreeing, so I'm the vice president. But you really wanted to be vice president. Somewhere in my heart, it was there, and now it was a spark, and now it's just on fire. So thank awesome. you for liberating awesome. that from you, me. It's you. sort of like being adjusted. When you get adjusted, you know, the any potential just comes out of the person. I think that's exactly how Shane Walker got yes. elected too. Yes. 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 And look what he's doing. Yeah. He's an you know awesome I mean? guy. Awesome. And yes. Liam Schubel. Awesome. Yes. I love those guys. Yeah. Love and those you're guys. right there with them. Yeah. 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 Because we share the principle. Yes. And we love chiropractic. Yes. So As I'm saying. For the fellowship? <laughs> yes. Absolutely. That's what we care about, the principle awesome. of chiropractic. And, and the forward. fellowship, just like the IFCO and also the board at Sherman, very cool about these organizations, very young people. Very young. Young people, you know, yes. on the boards, yeah. you know, in the doing and making. So mm -hmm. it's, that, that makes a difference in an organization. Very young, very hip like myself. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So uh, is there any plans that the fellowship has going on in PA? We have all kinds of plans in the works. And um, we have a new website coming, we have a new logo that's been designed. We have the main thing, the main thing is a new leadership that just came about. And we have our next meeting in the Poconos, which is November 9th. And it's an organizational meeting. And um, from what I understand, it, there's never been passion and purpose like this for a long time in Pennsylvania. Yeah, we've, we've, had, we've had some lulls just because of, of health issues within the organization, unfortunately, yeah. um, that have now come to an end. Yeah. So.
so that's wonderful. we're up and thriving again. But I think that's how every every place has its ups and downs, and it's it's very fun to be on the big upswing. Yeah, and just like chiropractic, it has its ups and downs, but it keeps on growing, it keeps on going forward, and it's something that'll never go away. Chiropractic, the principle is here: either us as chiropractors are going to move it forward, or some other group is going to come in and move it forward. So, and that's why the uh, organizations that we're involved in are so important. Kevin, did you speak? You spoke this weekend, didn't you? I did. I did. What, um, what direction? What were you talking about this weekend? Well, what I focused on this particular time is an equation that's important to me. I call it the chiropractic certainty equivalent, and it's a space that you want to bring a patient to as they visit your office. In other words, you want to teach them the principle. You want to be um, giving them, building value in it for them. And um, it's basically a method of, of achieving that. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Actually, that was going to be kind of my next question. Um, you and your wife have a very busy and thriving and well-running office. Mm -hmm. And um, can you give us a couple of things, little nuggets for people that are watching that want to grow their office? What are the things that have worked best for you? Well, one of the most fundamental things that we do in our office is going to be customer service. When you come into our office, we're going to love, we're going to give, we're going to serve to you. There's no doubt about that. Okay? The next thing, we're going to be very thorough when you come in. We're going to do an exam, we're going to do an x-ray, we're going to do the most important thing in a chiropractic office is an orientation. That orientation is strictly about the principle of chiropractic. Our main goal is to get a person to comprehend what the principle of chiropractic is. Comprehend, understand it, so that they can get in agreement with us, so they can go home and tell their family about chiropractic. So without any advertising or any coercion or any forced sign-up plans or any prepayment plans, that a person is willing to come into the office and be under chiropractic care based on their understanding of the principle. And this is one of the basic problems in our uh, profession is getting chiropractors to understand the principle in turn getting their patients to understand the principle. And you can't force people into your office by ads, tricky marketing. Um, yes, that stuff is very important, but it is the principle, teaching the principle, comprehending the principle, and then seeing the principle in action through a good quality adjustment, usually in the upper cervical area, that's going to make this whole thing work. And until you put those pieces together, you're going to always be suffering as far as a uh, practitioner. So you have an orientation. Mm -hmm. What do you do on an, because obviously a one-time lecture, people might get the spark then, but to keep that fire burning, what do you do on a, on a visit to visit basis to, to keep that going? What we did is we outlined 60 different points about the principle of 60, 6 zero. Six zero. So on every visit, you're going to hear something about the principle of chiropractic. And if anybody listening wants the 60 things that we put together, feel free to contact me at our office. It's in the phone book. It's on the internet. It's on Facebook. What, um, is, the, what is that information? How to contact you? It's going to be www.sigafusjackson.com. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And just tell... Uh, Can we find you on Facebook as well? Facebook as well. Kevin Jackson. Hi. Facebook. Okay. Yep. Very good. Yeah, there are several Kevin Jacksons. Um, it's a popular name. It's Irish. It's black. But I think uh, it's black you, Irish. But I think if, if you're a chiropractor, you'll find Kevin Jackson is the one that has like 125 mutual friends with you. So yes. Then yes. Yeah. You know that's the one. Yeah. So education, of course, is paramount. But education about the principle, and then believing the principle yourself. That's very important. Very important. And if you can get the, uh, the practice member to understand that principle, then they can share it with other folks. So yes. you do have to figure out a way to make it simple for folks to understand. Yeah. And, and some, some people can understand the principles as a chiropractor. But we go to school for four, you know, four years of grad school, so we have to boil it down so it makes it easy for them to relate Absolutely. to others. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, that's true. And you don't want to accidentally boil it down to back pain and neck pain. That's how uh, right. our profession has done things. They, to make it easy on themselves and to survive economically out there, we've taken a beautiful thing called the chiropractic principle and we've uh, boiled it down to people, if you have neck pain or back pain, come in and I'll, we'll manipulate you. 
Yeah, that's yeah, not what yes, we're talking it is about. Sad. And that's what the how the profession ended up where it's at. And it's based on economics. People get out there, and it's not because they didn't necessarily know good business. They didn't necessarily know good chiropractic. Right. Yeah. So comprehension is very important. Yes. Very important. Pretty, pretty vital. Okay. Dual conviction. Yes. Is what we need. Well, and dual conviction is another question. Dual. There's two of you in the office. Yes. You and your wife that's together. Right. Yes. How, how is that? How is working with a spouse? What are the pros? What are the cons? What do you love most about it? What do you hate about it? Well, I'll tell you the way that we have things arranged here. Is uh, she stays in the back and I stay in the front. Okay. That makes it work. And what's the back? What's the front? <laughs> the front. Uh, because, yeah, no, that depends on your office layout. <laughs> the front is you where the out, out outside yep. of the front door. <laughs> <laughs> the front is where the chiropractic adjustment takes place. That's okay. me. Yeah. And I do 99% of all the adjusting. The back is where the chiropractic principle is. Okay. Right? So one section is sharing the principle, and one section is delivering the principle. Okay. All right? And that's basically what she does. She does doctor's uh, reports, reactor reports, all day long, every day. Wow. That's what type of commitment it takes, to, I think, to build a big, a big practice and to have someone constantly educating people about the principle of chiropractic. Nice. It's all about the principle. Kevin, when I turn away, I'm, I'm looking over here at our viewers, yes. and they're, they're asking questions or making comments. And so we have one viewer, guest uh, 387 states, Dr. Kevin Jackson rocks. Wow. Very nice. So you, wow. you have, you have fans out there. I wonder yes. who that was. Uh, I have no idea. Uh -huh. uh, sometimes they put their names and sometimes they don't. Uh, but um, throughout the conversation, if you have any questions that you want to ask uh, Kevin, uh, just send them through the chat box, or if you're on Twitter following us, it's hashtag IFCO, and just go ahead and ask your questions. We're going to just continue now. Yep. Uh, so, Britt, what else do we have for Kevin to chit chat about? Um, advice for students. I mean, we'll have plenty of students watching this, watching us right now, watching this later. Advice for students. What, what can they do? Is what to do? learn the principle up one side, down the other. Everything you can possibly learn about it, which is found in the green books. And I can't stress enough that the principal is actually your biggest practice builder. Once people um, are taught the principal and they are convicted with the principal, then they can go home and they can influence their family. And that's the very uh, essence of growing a practice, is a person going into their own household and in turn turning on their family to chiropractic. And uh, that's what makes uh, big practices successful is that they become a family practice and they have that ability to turn lots of people into raving fans of chiropractic and it wasn't from a 72 visit care plan that they signed up for for $3,200 it was actually understanding the principle and then getting adjusted and seeing the principle work so learning a good technique and learning the principle is really all you really need. Do you so, recommend visiting people's offices and, sure. and all that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had the fortune to visit a um, big clinic in Boston and before I graduated, and they were seeing a thousand patient visits a week. And when I got out, I said, I want to see a thousand patient visits a week. I want to make a million dollars a year in my office. I want to have a successful practice. So for the last 15 out of 20 years, we've seen a thousand a week, and we've generated a lot of income, and we've taken that income and reinvested it back into chiropractic and ourselves. That's great. Yep. That's great. I'm proud about that because we need more successful chiropractors in chiropractic. We have a question from the audience. You want okay. to feel the question? Great, yes. excellent. Okay, so we have, how could a high school student become more active in the chiropractic community if they're thinking of becoming a chiropractor? Get a job at your local chiropractic office. We at any one time have five students that work for us. Oh wow. Yes, they're usually young attractive girls. Um, I don't know why it ends up that way. <laughs> and, you don't uh, pick them, do you? Who's I don't pick them, them and I'm glad that they're... But it's uh, we've had a couple uh, uh, male um, office workers before but uh, kids are really enthusiastic and, right. and when they're open-minded like they are they're very open to the principle of chiropractic the chiropractic lifestyle and they're just a real pleasure to have around so at any one time I have two or three of them working in the office awesome. yeah. so I'm guessing if you're accepting of high school students to come and work then if chiropractic students or you know people just starting in practice would like to come visit 
Yes. Open doors? Yes. Anybody, anytime, for whatever reason, our doors open. You can stay with us. We can go for dinner. Um, you're more than welcome to come to our office. Anything I could do, no charge. Never would charge anybody a thing. Um, that's what we need more of in our profession, is just everybody helping each other out. Less criticism, more enthusiasm. Absolutely. Yeah. We need to get more involved in the profession outside of our office. Yeah, yeah. When, when, I, have, when I have students come in to my office, I always am telling them, get involved outside of your office. It's important to do things in your office, but get involved outside the office as absolutely, well. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. You just got to get totally immersed in giving to people and helping people out. And I'll tell you, what, when you start doing those things, more doors open up. You're going to start seeing more people come into your office too. It just, it just happens. It's a principle. It's a principle. You cannot outgive the giver. You know, and the more that you give to right. people, the more it comes back to you. And it happens every time, whether you believe it or not. It just happens. Yeah. Yeah. You can't over uh, we're, give. We're, we're doing events like this and giving back to the community, uh, and we're doing all, all kinds of uh, events uh, for IFCO. And it just comes back to us, and it just keeps on coming. And Absolutely. I'll do it. My office is ever. Wonderful. And, and, and I'm involved so much outside the office now yeah. in so many different things, too, with our state society, as you, mm -hmm. and our international society, IFCO. Absolutely. Uh, so it, it's, it's a lot of fun, and yeah. it, just, it, it keeps you busy, yeah. and you have to time manage well, but, but all those things happen. Well, the deal is this, is whatever is in your mind and your heart it eventually gets expressed in your life. So if you're busy helping people and giving to people for no other reason but to just for the sake of doing it, it's going to transform your outer life. You know, if you fill your head with negative things, um, discouragement and criticism, you're going to find the same thing happening outside in your life. And that's a principle that you don't want to mess around with. You always want to stay positive and encouragement, and we want to uplift our brothers and sisters in chiropractic. Absolutely. Any have a, oh, go ahead, please. Wait. Favorite office stories, favorite memories, favorite anecdotes? Well, one of my favorite office stories of all time is actually not my office, it's my brother in law's office. He, uh, Don Sigafus, has a, uh, an office in Baltimore, Maryland. And it was a, um, it's a home office type deal where it has a small waiting room in the front, uh, sort of like what would be a living room. And in the back is the adjusting area. So what had happened was it was a very, very cold day in Baltimore. It had rained um, and uh, it froze over. Thank you very much. And uh, he had these railway ties that outlined the parking lot. Well, what had happened was someone backed over a railway tie and their car got stuck. And so Don was busy adjusting people and he could hear the lady's tires spinning as she was trying to get over the railway tie. So they're spinning and they're spinning and they're spinning. And um, finally, he looked out the window and he was gonna make a decision to go out there and help. It was very cold outside freezing rain he was going to show his uh, show his office members who were in the waiting room how it was done so don goes outside with his dress shoes on and his loafers no jacket on and he gets behind the car and he's pushing the car give it some gas give it some gas give it some gas so what happened was the car finally went over the railway tie and it shook the railway tie loose. The lady was probably hitting around 60 miles an hour and the railway tie spun uh, out from beneath the tires and it hit Don in the shins. Oh and Don collapsed and the lady's uh, windows were fogged up and she drove away. Right? So Don actually got hit so hard in the shins that he collapsed. That's a horrible story. Why are you telling us this? <laughs> oh my There's a happy ending to okay. it. Oh, good. Okay. So okay. Don, Don came to, and he walked through his waiting room, and the people were clapping for him. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And he went into his office, and he had to sit down for a while because at that point he had a splitting headache. Yeah. And his head was pounding, Don said. But the office was full. As you know, you could just picture the whole scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, right when you least need it. It's right, right. full beyond capacity. Well, his head was pounding and his shins were hurting. I think he actually had a hairline fracture in his shin. The moral of the story is, is that Don gathered himself up. He finished the day with a high volume day. 
And that, to me, yeah. is one of the greatest uh, examples of serving unconditionally that yeah, I can absolutely. think of. Oh Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> wow. Is that a great That's story? That's a cool story. That's a, That's a, good story. Story. Yes, yeah. it's a very good story. I it's mean, a very untypical story. I absolutely. Like yeah. There's tons of other, you know, testimonials yeah, 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 and such, yeah. but that was a good, story, a good eh? story. Yeah. Good pick. Yeah. Is there anything you wanted to add? Um, let me see. Well, it looked like something just happened there. No, we, we got to all those questions. Great. Good, Th perfect. Thank you for asking those questions, guys. Uh, we're with uh, Kevin Jackson from PA. What, what's uh, the? York. York PA. York PA, yeah. All right. Right by Gettysburg, right? That's right. If you come to visit us, you can go to see the Gettysburg uh, National Battlefield. You can go over to um, Lancaster and you can see the Amish and how the Amish do things. Over by uh, Skip George's office. You can go to Skip George's, who's also a member. Yes. And um, it's just a very nice area, and I'm happy to be in Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Canada, and uh, I just can't say enough about uh, Pennsylvania and how I love Pennsylvania and how I want to uh, further propagate the principle of chiropractic in Pennsylvania. How, how far reaching does the, the fellowship go in, in PA? Does it go ev everywhere? Do you have people from, let's say, Pittsburgh? Yeah. And sure, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Aaron yeah. Tressler. Aaron Tressler, yeah. He's also running around here. He's in the yeah. Pittsburgh area. They just had a nice event, Philosophy on the Farm. Right. Right. Um, with student recruitment and right. mm -hmm. doctor sessions and some outdoor fun and nice. all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, awesome. we have it going on all over the place. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for coming out and spending some time with us here thank on you. IFCO TV. Fun? I did, I did. It's yeah. been a real, Great, a real yeah. good deal.